Hey guys, wow, I am overwhelmed by the amount of requests that I've gotten to talk about Stargirl in the past few months. Um, so much so that I'm a little embarrassed that I waited this long to do it, but okay, if you want me to talk about Stargirl, here we go. So Stargirl is a 2017 short film about a sheep herder who finds an alien that, what? Oh, n not that Stargirl, there's, oh, sorry, wrong Stargirl. Um, of course, what, I'm, what you guys really want me to talk about is the amazing coming of age story that's available on Disney Plus right now based on the amazing book by, oh, not that Stargirl, there's, there's a third Stargirl. Oh, DC Stargirl. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, so the point of that sketch is DC Comics needs to trademark their shit. <laughs> anyway, uh, all right, let's talk about Courtney Whitmore, uh, the DC Comics Stargirl, the superhero um, who was a part of one of the, the new generations, the current generation of superheroes in the world of comics. She is a pioneer. She's one of the first new teenage superheroes to be introduced way before Spider-Gwen and Kamala Khan, a.k.a. Miss Marvel, we had the Star Spangled Kid, a.k.a. Stargirl. Um, so it's crazy that uh, a lot of people keep asking me, uh, Erod, who is this character? This is this a star girl in DC Comics? What the hell? Uh, who, I don't know who this is. Can you tell me more about it? Here's the thing. Star Girl has been featured in almost every DC Comics TV show adaptation for the last 20 years. She was in Justice League Unlimited. She was in Smallville. She was in Batman the Brave and the Bold. She was in Justice League Action. And then on top of all that, she was in Legends of Tomorrow, which I think we can all agree is both a modern show and a very popular show that a lot of people have seen. So I think it's crazy that she's been in so much and, and somehow, some way, gone unnoticed by the general public. But I guess that's one of the characters' main appeals. So just for the sake of clarity, um, for the sake of those of you who don't know, let me give you a little background on this character and where she came from and what she's about. Uh, so in the late 90s, early 2000s, DC Comics started this initiative to reboot the Justice Society of America comic. And they were going to use the exact same formula that they used for the current Star Wars movies where they would bring back all the classic characters, but they would have them work side by side with new, revamped, rebooted versions of old characters. And the two characters that have stood the test of time and survived that uh, that phase of the DC of the DC Comics universe uh, were Michael Holt, better known as Mr. Terrific, who was portrayed in a very nerdy, very annoying way on Arrow, um, and of course Star Girl, Courtney Whitmore. What was unique and cool and interesting about this new version of Starman, unlike other comics, her comic book Stars and Stripe wouldn't just see a female be a hero and a male be her sidekick, but she was a teenage girl being the hero and an adult being the sidekick, the reverse. So from the get-go, right out of the gate, the comic book had a very, very different vibe than any other comics that were out there at the time. Like, for example, traditionally comic book characters take on the mantle of a superhero for honorable and heroic reasons. In the case of Courtney Whitmore, she literally stole Star Spangled Kid's costume and gravity belt uh, to piss off her stepdad because she, she didn't like her new stepdad and wanted to upset him um, by stealing the costume and equipment of the former hero that Pat Dugan used to be the sidekick to. Um, so that uh, right out of the gate was different, it was fresh, it was interesting, um, that she didn't have a higher calling. All she wanted to do was piss off her stepdad, but when the opportunity to be a hero was presented to her, she took it. Um, but more interestingly, unlike the show where she, you know, goes into becoming Stargirl right away. She wasn't supposed to be, uh, she didn't initially 
become the new Starman. She was originally the new Star Spangled Kid, which is another Just Society uh, character. Um, it was later in the comics that Starman passed his cosmic staff to her, and she took on his power, and she changed her name to Stargirl. Interestingly enough, she didn't change her costume at all, which is the most 90s superhero co costume of all time. A crop top showing her belly with long sleeves and bicycle pants um, and, like, clunky boots. <laughs> that's her costume. And a mask, but that's her costume. And I think it's hilarious that that costume has endured and not changed by much. She basically wears the exact same thing in every incarnation, including this one. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, and of course, Pat Dugan being her sidekick, he becomes Stripe, which is a giant mech that travels along with Courtney and her adventures and helps her along. Anyway, so in this video, I'm specifically going to talk about my first impressions of the show based solely on the pilot episode. Please don't forget that my opinions and feelings on the show might change by the end of the season, okay? I cannot make that clear enough, all right? So, again, based on the pilot episode alone, these are my opinions. Here we go. Also, um, if you haven't seen uh, the pilot of Stargirl, please stop the video here. There will most definitely be spoilers ahead. Um, it's available right now on demand if you have cable. If you don't have cable, it's available for free on the CW app. However, if you want to see the full-length, uncut version of the episode without commercials, it's available on DC Universe Streaming. That's right. The episodes were originally designed to uh, be exclusive to the DC Universe streaming service, um, and they were actually made to be longer. Um, but then suddenly the CW decided they wanted a piece of Stargirl and to be able to fit into their 44-minute format where they can put in commercials into that one hour block of TV, they have to edit down the episodes. So yeah, if you're watching it on just regular television or the CW app, you're not seeing the full uh, full length episode like, like the creators originally intended. Now, personally, I saw both. I saw the DC Universe version, I saw the CW version, and the stuff they cut out of the pilot, it really wasn't that crucial. Uh, just an interaction of Courtney with one of the bullies in school, this douchebag girl with, like, skunk hair. Just quick interaction with her and Brainwave, the villain, telekinetically moving a key from one side of the room to another and unlocking a secret room. Um, and those are the only two things that I noticed. If they cut more, I didn't notice at all. Um, so there you go. I Again, based only on the pilot, I haven't seen any of the other episodes yet. All right? Anywho, 